Hello everybody. Today we are in the Paris collection of the AG Leventis Gallery between the mid 1700s and mid 1800s. And we're going to take a look at a wonderful painting by the artist Louis Leopold Foyer. Now this is quite an interesting painting because it's unusual once you look at it a little bit more closely. So at first glance, we see the portrait of a, of a young woman, a small portrait of a young woman. But then we notice that she's dressed in quite fanciful wear and walking through a garden. And then behind in the shadows, there's this figure of a young girl. Now, generally, this makes us think in what way, why was this painting painted? It, it, it doesn't really fit in a context. It's not a particular scene. It's definitely not an individual portrait. And so a little bit of research was done into um, Boyi and his art. Now, Boyi scholars would recognize um, this figure of this um, young lady from another large-scale painting, one of Boyi's most famous paintings that's located at the Louvre, where we actually see this figure, along with a little girl to the right, at um, one end of the painting. Now, also in Boyi's studio, there was a sketch, a, a pencil and chalk sketch, of um, this figure right here, of the young girl. So it's possible that as Boyi was both preparing for the other painting and doing this other sketch, that he quite enjoyed painting these figures. And we do know that he really liked the large-scale painting at the Louvre because he actually bought it back um, under a supposed name to have it in his own personal collection at different periods. So it's possible that he actually painted this young girl simply because he liked it. And I find this really nice because it's kind of like we have this sort of inside view into the artist's mind that other than painting commission paintings, sometimes they painted something just because they enjoyed it. And the other thing I love about this painting is it's very much um, a testimony, a depiction of the time at this period of change. So this is after the French Revolution, and we see a radical change in the dressing. So we see the empire-waisted dresses, which meant that instead of the full crinoline, there was something a little bit more sleek, which of course meant the disappearance of pockets. And this was when we see the first example of handbags in the Western culture. So we see these little pouches here and these wonderful little sort of ballerina flats. Now, this kind of um, dress in this period of time has become increasingly popular nowadays. And if it's of interest of you, if this sort of excites you, I would recommend seeing um, the wonderful BBC versions of various Jane Austen novels and the new Netflix series, Bridgerton, to really get into the whole spirit of this time. Thank you for listening.